the U.S. Navy's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier is the most technologically advanced and designed carrier in over 40 years. Gerald R. Ford is the first Ford-class aircraft carrier, and because of its huge success, the Navy has begun construction on the next two Ford-class carriers, the USS Kennedy and the USS Enterprise. Do you know what are the main specifications of this technological marvel? How much more efficient is this carrier compared to Nimitz class? So here in this video, we are going to explain to you about the new USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier. The $13 billion nuclear powered USS Gerald R. Ford is the United States Navy's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier yet and has capabilities that dwarf anything and any other military force in the world. This aircraft carrier has new advanced technology, including nearly three times the amount of electrical power, compared to the Nimitz class carriers and uses the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. On 10 and September 2008, the U.S. Navy signed a $5.1 billion contract with Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding in Newport News, Virginia, to design and construct the carrier. Northrop had begun advanced construction of the carrier under a $2.7 billion contract in 2005. The carrier was constructed at the Huntington & Gels Newport News Shipbuilding Facilities in Newport News, Virginia. In August 2011, the carrier was reported to be structurally halfway complete. In April 2012, construction was said to be 75% complete. On 24 May 2012, the important milestone of completing the vessel up to the waterline was reached when the critical lower bow was lifted into place. By 19th of December 2012, construction had reached 90% structural completion. The ship was originally scheduled for launch in July 2013 and delivery in 2015, but the production delays meant that the launch was delayed until 11th October 2013 and the naming ceremony until 9th November 2013, with delivery in February 2016. In January 2014, the Annual Director Operational Test and Evaluation Report recorded that critical ship systems in lab and test environments, including the EMELs, advanced arresting gear, dual band radar, and weapons elevators were not reliable enough and needed more testing and improvements. The Navy implemented a rigorous testing program to ensure performance issues would be resolved before the systems were installed on the aircraft carrier. Major problems with the main turbine generators were found in June 2016. The fix, requiring design changes, was installed and was verified during acceptance trials in May 2017. The initial operational test and evaluation milestone was achieved in April 2017. On 8 April 2017, Gerald R. Ford got underway under own power for the first time as it headed to sea for builders' trials. It completed the trials and returned to port at Naval Station Norfolk on 14 April 2017. On 24 May 2017, it departed for acceptance trials and completed them on 26 May 2017. By March 2018, due to issues with the nuclear propulsion system and munitions elevators, construction costs had reached $13.027 billion, making the Gerald R. Ford the most expensive warship ever built. In 2018, the Navy requested to delay shock trials for at least six years in order to speed up the ship's deployment, but this request was denied. On 18th of June 2021, Gerald R. Ford completed its first full ship shock trial 87, which is 18 nautical miles off Ponce Inlet, Florida, to ensure that she is able to withstand battle conditions. 18 tons of TNT was detonated underwater measured as a 3.9 magnitude earthquake by USGS. Additional tests were conducted in July and August, with the test detonation set off closer to the hull. The ship was determined to have passed the tests, and this concluded the trials. The USS Ford was challenged against rocket-powered drones capable of reaching speeds of over 600 miles per hour, towed drone units that simulate rockets, and remote-controlled, high-speed maneuvering surface targets. Demonstrating this type of defensive capability is both relevant and critical tactically, given current debates over aircraft carriers' vulnerability in an increasingly high-tech primary power threat environment. Unfortunately, most of the discussion, which is predicated mainly on the presence of Chinese extremely long-range carrier-killer anti-ship missiles, frequently appears to disregard the expanding technological sophistication of multi-layer ship defense systems. Anyway, their specifications are just unbelievable. The machines which are armed in it make it a beast. 
The carrier's size allows it to support up to 90 aircraft, including the 5th Gen F-35, F-A-18 Super Hornet, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, EA-18G Growler Electronic Attack Aircraft MH-60RS helicopters, as well as a number of UAVs. To conduct all operations aboard the carrier, a crew of over 4,500 personnel was needed. Despite its size, the aircraft carrier is remarkably agile, with a top speed of over 30 knots, that is 56 km per hour. The forward-class carrier can keep up with much smaller vessels. This is due to the power generated by its two A1B nuclear reactors, offering 250% more electrical capacity than the Nimitz class. Gerald R. Ford is also equipped with an AN SPY-3 and AN SPY-4 active electronically scanned array multifunction and multiband radar with the ship self-defense system MK2 baseline 10 of the Mod 6 variant command and control system, an island that is shorter in length and 20 feet taller than that of the Nimitz class which is set 140 feet farther aft and 3 feet closer to the edge of the ship. Replacing traditional steam catapults, the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, known as E-Mails, will launch all non-VTOL carrier aircraft. This innovation eliminates the traditional requirement to generate and store steam, freeing up considerable area below deck. With the E-Mails, Gerald R. Ford can accomplish 25% more aircraft launches per day than the Nimitz class and requires 25% fewer crew members. The Navy estimates it will save $4 billion in operating costs over a 50-year lifespan. Aircraft carriers are offensive weapons and mightily expensive symbols of a nation's military might. This means that despite its aircraft and onboard defense systems, the Gerald R. Ford, like all aircraft carriers, always travels with the defensive cover of a carrier strike group. Interestingly, some of the specific ship defense weapons described in the Navy paper have recently received significant enhancements. This is all part of a multi-year effort to better arm its surface fleet with weapons capable of destroying highly advanced enemies in the open ocean or blue water maritime battle. For example, the updated Sea Sparrow ESSM Block II missile is designed with a unique sea skimming mode that enables it to descend close to the surface and kill adversary anti-ship missiles moving parallel to the ocean just above the water. Rather than flying straight up, the ESSM Block II can skim across the surface, eliminating an entirely new sphere of attacking enemy threats. On 3rd January 2007, former United States Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld announced that the aircraft carrier would be named after Ford during a eulogy for President Ford at Grace Episcopal Church in East Grand Rapids, Michigan. Rumsfeld indicated that he had personally told Ford of the honor during a visit to his home in Rancho Mirage a few weeks before Ford's death. This makes the aircraft carrier one of the few U.S. ships named after a living person. The Navy confirmed that the aircraft carrier would indeed be named after the former president. On 16th January 2007, Navy Secretary Donald Winter officially named CVN-78 USS Gerald R. Ford. And that wraps up today's content. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you won't miss out on our future contents.